Chapter 15 Including the Old Testament The great, all-wise and righteous father of the human race is a stable lawgiver. He is not so capricious as to give specific laws to part of mankind and another set of laws to someone else. Nor with the changing of time does he allow these laws to change. If polygamy were wrong or displeasing to God, he never would have tolerated it at all. If it were a sin, he would have said so in the beginning of time, and not waited four thousand years to make up his mind. Furthermore, if it were a sin, he would have made very definite laws against it, and he would have clearly described the punishments that should be inflicted upon those who lived it. He would have included the law against polygamy with the other commandments, so that people could read them, study them, and teach them as his law. But, there is no such law against it in the Old Testament. Polygamy is either lawful or unlawful. So far in the Bible we have not discovered anywhere that God said it was unlawful. For many, it is a revolting fact to learn that God had a man stoned to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath, that thousands of men in Israel had to die because of one act of immorality, that even juvenile delinquents were stoned to death by the elders. Yet God allowed his choicest prophets, patriarchs, judges and kings in Israel to live polygamy. Now, on the other hand, let's consider an act of adultery. In the eyes of God and man, it has always been considered one of the blackest crimes against the law. It is so degrading, loathsome and revolting in its nature, that God classed it with the act of murder. God's law required a punishment of death to those guilty of murder or adultery. If polygamy would have been considered adultery, then almost all of the ancient prophets would have been stoned to death, according to the law of God. But nowhere in the Bible do we find an instance of a man being stoned to death because he had two or more wives. Even those heathen nations who became corrupt through their sexual adulteries, homosexual acts and whoredoms were not considered worthy to live, for the Lord told the children of Israel that when they went to battle against dot, 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 the cities of these people, which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth, but thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely, the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their gods, so should ye sin against the Lord your God. Dute, 2016-18. From the beginning of time, for as long as there is a future, there must be specific and consistent laws to govern the moral nature of man. Wherever there is virtue, there is vice, where there is morality, there is immorality, and where there is marriage, there are unwavering laws that bind it. In God's great wisdom, he knows which laws are best for his children's virtue and happiness. If it would not have been righteous for men to have more than one wife, then he would have made laws to forbid it. We have seen that God has continually forbid a woman from having more than one husband. He made laws that forbid any man, whether married or unmarried, that cohabited with a woman, to ever divorce her or cast her away. We read of a law that required a man's brother, whether married or single, to marry his brother's widow. It is written that God said to take concubines in war as wives. We have seen that God gave wives to David when he already had wives, and did the same for others. We read of God's abounding love for the polygamists Abraham, Jacob and many other prophets, patriarchs and kings. We read of great and wonderful blessings given to the children born in polygamy that were never given to the children of monogamists. But we have not found where God chastised or punished any man for righteously having more than one wife. Remember that these principles and practices were established upon God's laws. The Old Testament of the Bible has clearly demonstrated and proved that polygamy was very lawful that God made it acceptable and pleasing in his sight. Now we shall see if it is treated the same in the New Testament.